Boo, and welcome to another hauntingly horrific episode of What Happened, the show where we Konami. Fuck em. Some of you might remember, we covered Silent Hill Downpour a few months back, but I wouldn't blame you if you didn't, as almost anything related to that game is a rapidly crumbling memory of a forgotten madman. With that in mind, however, Konami has given us no shortage of monumental tales of mismanagement revolving around their own franchises. Metal Gear Survive, what happened? Never Dead, Lords of Shadow 2, what happened? Any of these Contra games, what happened? But, oh, would you look at that? Yeah, so I'm not legally allowed to talk about anything but horror games this month, and since the limp, unremarkable tale of Homecoming will only dull the senses, let's instead dig deep into the grave and pull out the Silent Hill HD Collection, one of the worst ways to experience two absolute classics in the genre of horror. Now, some Silent Hill fans, i.e. most of them, curse just about everyone and everything for giving birth to this collection, with the developer who handled said ports, as well as then Silent Hill producer Tom Hewlett, receiving most of the abuse. After doing some research, however, most of the blame should be directed elsewhere. Before that, though, we need to provide at least a shred of context. When we hoisted Silent Hill down corn onto our stage, we discussed one of its many problems, the delay from October of 2011 to March of the next year. Cryptically, Konami never said why this delay occurred. Here's why. Originally, they wanted all their little Silent Hill ducks in a row, releasing in the same month to make the most impact. And it was a massive failure. Right, so the movie Silent Hill Revelations 3D did get farted out into the theaters on schedule, as Konami only had limited control over that. But their video game projects had no choice in the matter. They were so far away from the finish line that they had to be delayed. So instead, Konami decided to shift everything over to the most macabre, blood-soaked month in the pagan calendar. March. <laughs> Alrighty, the snow is melting, the birds are chirping, let the month of madness begin. Fans both new and old would now be able to experience the tension, the isolation, and the psychological terror provided by two masterclasses in the genre. So, yeah, what... What happened? Now, upon entering this HD version of Silent Hill, you might see something stumble out of the choking fog. Well, okay, okay, maybe maybe fog is a bit generous. A light mist, let's say. So, yeah, that piteous form would be that of the developer, Hijinx Studios. Founded in California, Hijinx quickly established a working relationship with Konami and were probably chosen to bring Silent Hill into the HD era due to the prestigious franchises they worked on previously, such as Karaoke Revolution Glee. Karaoke Revolution Glee Volume 2. And of course, Karaoke Revolution Glee Volume 3. The whole idea of a Silent Hill HD was kicked off when Konami saw the praise and sales success of the sublime Metal Gear Solid collection, as well as the increasing trend of remasters in general. Within the company, projects like these were seen as a fast, easy way to squeeze more money out of a pre-existing game or franchise. However, this type of work isn't something every studio can do. Case in point, hygiene. It actually takes a lot of insight and experience in how certain games work to then backwards engineer them into playing nice on modern consoles. While Hijinx had certainly made several games for Konami and specifically for their US branch, they actually had zero experience in remastering old titles, and the demands and restrictions that were put in place in typical Konami fashion weren't exactly ideal. Now remember, these are two of the most critically lauded horror video games of all time, with a a rapid, slavering fan base. If there are any other Konami characters outside of Snake that deserve the best remastering possible, it's James and Heather. In an interview with Rely on Horror, a former staffer who worked on Silent Hill HD opened up about the project and its many, many, many woes. When asked if they were given the appropriate budget, resources, and time to work on two titles with such a prestigious pedigree, they stated, oh, 
definitely not. I imagine that Konami saw this as a very quick and painless way to make some money while HD remasters were popular. It ended up taking much longer. The intended schedule was a few months, but by the end, we had spent more than a year on the project. See, the MGS HDC came out first, so I'm not sure about the time they were given, but they were almost certainly given a much larger budget. I don't imagine Bluepoint had the level of trouble we did with SH, as Kojima Productions still existed at that time. So, if Bluepoint needed to ask questions or rent any difficulties, that resource was there. Obviously, that wasn't an option for us. Team Silent, the collective of talented individuals who had developed the first four Silent Hills, had been disbanded back in the mid-2000s, much to the ire of fans. This, of course, fed into one of the more infamous issues plaguing this project in particular, which is what doomed it from the very beginning. Konami had lost and or thrown out the source code for the final gold masters of both Silent Hill 2 and 3. Let that just sink in. It's ridiculous. Couldn't possibly be true. But oh, don't worry, Hijinx Papa Konami has you covered. We heroically saved these other non-final builds of both games just for you. Here you go. Konami expected this inexperienced, fairly young American team to remaster two horror classics with unfinished code. They were riddled with bugs, missing textures, audio issues, just about everything you can think of when you think of early build. This, uh, this town, there's something wrong with it. Both games were completable, sure, but when a lot of your appeal is based on a specific and at times very subtle atmosphere, even the smallest audio quirk or wayward texture can destroy a lot of what makes Silent Hill games memorable. The anonymous staffer on this particular subject goes on. Konami provided the source assets that had been archived after the original release on the PlayStation 2. These were the only assets available, and as far as we knew going in, the completed final code. However, after digging into the code and assets, it was obvious these were not final. Whoever archived it must have done it before the final submission or worked with incomplete data. Nobody really knows by virtue of it being so long ago. Needless to say, there were many unfinished elements. How can you possibly expect a team who is already lacking experience complete the job without having all of the canvas or brushes or materials they need? Well, you can if you're Konami. Damn it. Undaunted, Hijinx plugged away and now had to do way more work than they had originally anticipated. If a texture was found to be missing, it would need to be recreated by the artist from scratch. The soundtrack was going to be presented in surround, so the audio team spent months remastering every single song with that in mind. All of this extra elbow grease, of course, exponentially increased the time they would need to get the games up to snuff, and considering the state of them upon release, that's fucked up. Another issue the former staffer brought up was that unlike Silent Hill, the Metal Gear franchise had a presiding figure over it, Hideo Kojima. Therefore, all MGS projects were overseen by Kojima Productions. Uh, wait, the uh, old Kojima Productions logo, not the new... Uh, okay. So, a lot of other Konami franchises like Contra, Castlevania, or Sparkster had no rock star dad to protect them. I guess that's at least one reason why Kojima started to get involved with some of these games in the first place, as they were flawed without shepherds. God, ah, this is making me so sad. Let's keep going. The voiceovers, a change literally no one asked for and something that Hijinx had zero control over, was its own mucky quagmire. This is mainly to do with the bad blood between Konami Productions and Guy Sihi, the voice of James who claimed that in 2010, Konami owed him unpaid residuals for his performance, which would lead him to later refuse to give his blessing to the new recordings. This problem gets a bit complicated as the recasted James, Troy Baker, chimed in on the issue, stating that voice acting contracts simply aren't written like that. No one gets paid residuals for their performance as it becomes the property of the company contracting the work. You sign 
on, you get paid, and that's it. When the former hijink staffer was asked about this, they sided with Baker. I'm fairly sure they were reissued standard voice contracts, which specify that Konami owns all performances without additional compensation. Regardless of who was at fault, it certainly was a blow to the remaster's authenticity. Hijinx, however, was orbiting outside all this drama. They were told to implement the new voices, and so they did. I'm not on anybody's side. I don't know anything about this. Even being able to wipe their hands of the recasting process, however, they were still not spared additional problems concerning the audio. What are you talking about? All right, so this this thing is just uh, hijinks weren't able to adjust any of the in-game cutscenes without messing up the code and creating more potential problems. So all they could do was manipulate the length of the sound files themselves to best fit the scene, which was obviously an imperfect process. I guess I really don't care if it's dangerous or not. I'm going into town either way. The subtitles for the cutscenes were also hard-coded, so they couldn't adjust the text to account for any small inflections or added words that might have occurred during the re-recordings. Doesn't this place get to you at all? Oh, it gets to me all right. Curiously, however, the new voiceovers were mandatory in Silent Hill 3, whereas players had the option in Silent Hill 2, which makes little sense given the context. All Konami would officially say in regards to this was a Tom Hewlett authored post on the Silent Hill Facebook page. Unfortunately, due to factors both technical and logistical, Silent Hill 3 will be presented with new voices only. Since then, sources claim that Konami had simply lost the original recordings for Silent Hill 3 altogether. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'll put your shocked faces on, but Silent Hill fans did not take kindly to this. It's almost as if hijinks were being tortured, like they were wandering through rusty, grinding hallways, being assaulted by new problems at every turn, trying to stop them from reaching their goal. Konami had to know of all the headaches the project was going through, so why on earth was the game released in such a state in the first place? Since the game had gone so long past its original schedule, it just had to come out or be cancelled. Everyone knew how important HD Silent Hill would be to fans, so we tried to clean it up as best we could and release it rather than cancelling the whole thing. It was decided that it would come out during the same window as Downpour and the Vita game, so we fixed as many of the issues as we could before the deadline. Since this was intended to just be a simple re-release, there was no sort of quality control at Konami for game faithfulness, and there were no original members of Team Silent to give the all clear, Akira Yamaoka having quit Konami back in 2009. All the collection needed to do was pass all of Sony and Microsoft's certification requirements. So, longtime fans of the series were taken aback when they encountered dramatically scaled back fog, ugly textures that were hidden in the original release but were now made more visible due to the HD upscale, crashes, incorrect sound effects, and frame rate drops where there were no frame rate drops before. Is this thing broken? By almost every quantifiable metric in both presentation, performance, and atmosphere, these ports are considered inferior to their PS2 and Xbox iterations. Masahiro Ito, a former art director of Team Silent, was even shown the downgrade on Twitter, to which he replied, Left side is HD, isn't it? It's poor. It's really the released version? Really? A patch was then quickly issued after launch that fixed a small number of problems, and a much bigger patch was promised to come to both consoles and fix the rest, which turned out to kind of be a massive lie. See, in the seventh generation, most console manufacturers would charge not insignificant fees for publishers to issue patches. In Konami's case, they simply didn't want to spend more money fixing the game. Since the Silent Hill series had a long history with the PlayStation brand, and with said brand being a much bigger factor in Japan, it's reasonable to assume that Konami wanted to focus on the PlayStation 3 version instead. So they just cancelled the 360 patch, with the only official word from Konami being that this was due to technical and resource issues. You mean money! March 2012, the month of madness, as Konami called it, had to be one of the most dismal failures in trying to reinvigorate a franchise. What's more is that Book of Memories, a dungeon crawler for some forgotten handheld, was then delayed a further six months, finally releasing that October. Why not just delay all three games at that point to actually smooth out the literal thousands of problems and bad PR moves you've already made? 
No, as it stands, all three of these Silent Hill releases were all put through the ringer review-wise, posting the lowest scores of the franchise and selling just as poorly. The proposed Month of Madness also killed two out of the three studios associated with it, the lone survivor, Way Forward, thankfully still going strong. In case you missed that implication, yes, Hijink Studios was closed mere days after the HD collection they tried so hard to salvage hit store shelves. A <sighs> sad end to an even sadder tale. Fortunately, however, you can download Silent Hill 2 and 3 on the PlayStation Store. Oh, wait, that's, that's right. Konami never made available the original version of either game on any digital storefront, only Silent Hill 1. But you can get the HD collection via backwards compatibility on Xbox One. You know, the versions that had their patches cancelled. Wait, this version didn't get patched? This is the version I have! It's very possible that if you've never played the originals and you don't care about bugs and performance issues, the HD collection might be an easy way for you to experience them, but I implore you to dig out your PS2 or Xbox, or if you're into the modding scene on PC, you can finagle your way into making your own HD remaster if you are so inclined. With the outright cancellation and internet scrubbing of Silent Hill as a complete reboot of the franchise, with Hideo Kojima, Guillermo del Toro, and Junji Ito at the helm, Konami not only burned bridges with the fans, but pissed out the flames as well, so it's really hard to look at the future of the franchise with any degree of positivity. <laughs> That being said, just two months ago, the company did register for a new Silent Hill trademark, but with no additional details at this time, it remains to be seen what this might wind up being. A brand new title? Another movie? Maybe another betterer collection? Well, what the final source code still lost, the same pitfalls and setbacks that plagued hijinks might again haunt whoever attempts to follow in their footsteps. If you know of any other scary, sad sacks of scummy scandals, write your suggestions in metaphorical blood in the comments below, or take a lonely, haunting walk over to the Flophouse VIP Patreon to officially vote on our next topic. See you next time, and thanks for- Oh, so it was all your work! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>